Welcome back everyone to PGL Tavern Tales here in Bucharest. I'm Raven and casting this next match is going to be Nimsh and special guest again, Ecop. It's me, yeah. Welcome back. Uh, Are you good uh, to be back, yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. Are you um, having a good time here? You enjoying the uh, the tournament so far? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, we've seen some great matches. We've seen some great uh, Yoxa runs especially, <laughs> right? So uh, that's Great, always that's always interesting that's word. That's always a joy to see and uh, I would like to see more of that in this series, hopefully. Well, hopefully not many Yoxa runs, <laughs> but overall, like, the Bansen picks are still the thing that, that's mo most interesting for me because people have so many strategies and it enhances the last hero standing so much as well because every time you have to uh, draft, let's say, classes a bit differently. So that's the big thing. Yeah, and also we've, uh, you know, half been joking, but half quite serious talking about the power of Druid we've been seeing. Like, are the bands going to change and you have to just change up the strategy? I know JJ, after the previous match, was just saying, like, yeah, should have banned Druid out? Because obviously we saw Hoy go 3 0. But the next match we have coming up is going to be 6 0 versus Tessin. So, yeah. you know, Tessin, uh, you know, c sort of flies under the radar, I feel, quite a lot. He's actually had some very good performances leading up to this tournament, but nothing like a crazy breakout performance yet. And he's doing well so far. He crushed through his group, which was quite impressive in itself, because we've been going on about how stacked all the groups are, uh, but he is against 6-0 now, so that's going to be a tough one to continue on for, I feel. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I mean, we've seen Tessin at PGL, we've seen Tessin at DreamHack Summer as well, so uh, he has those small achievements in a way, because getting to the top 8 is really big yeah. uh, for most of the players. Like, I think uh, overall the esports scene in Hearthstone focuses um, too much on the first place. Mm -hmm. Just getting to the top 8 when there's 200 people is a great achievement of its own. Uh, but Tessin yeah, definitely has the chance to, to win this tournament himself. And uh, Iko, what do you think? Like, uh, Tessin versus Sixo. Would you see Tessin winning this one and just advancing uh, forward and even maybe taking the event? I don't see why not. I mean, he's been, he like you said, he crushed his group, which included me as well. He, <laughs> he, I didn't get that was named at UE Cup, I, I, I promise. I didn't get, to, <laughs> I didn't get to face him. Unfortunately, I probably would have beaten him, but yeah. of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he beat uh, Super JJ first, then he beat RDU in the winners' final, so he two out the group and. Like, very impressive opponents already. And uh, now he faces Sixo, which is on the same caliber. So I, I don't think Tessin is going to feel the pressure. He's just going to approach this uh, the same way he approached his previous matches and uh, just play his best, I guess. And, yeah, hopefully get the win. I've yeah. been talking to RDU, actually, about Tessin. And he said that um, Tessin doesn't make many mistakes overall. Where uh, basically his game plan is really good and his play is really good. Uh, he was also commanding his shaman list that Tessin brought the shaman list that really works. So a nice list right there. Plus the the Bunsen picks um, strategy that he is applying is really good. Like he made one mistake in one match and then he was able to admit that it was a mistake. Uh, yeah, learn from picks. it. Yeah, definitely. So he has a good attitude of a player that grows during the tournament and has a chance to take it. Yeah, well, we had a chance to actually sit down with Tessin and find out what he thought about his tournament performance so far. My name is Tessin. I'm 21 years old. I'm from Denmark. I'm really happy. <laughs> I just won my group. <laughs> About this tournament overall, I really like that there's so many good players. Like, no matter which group you get in, it will be really hard. And you need to prepare a lot. Both preparing with the right decks, but also look at your opponents. What are they going to bring and how am I going to beat them? Right now, I only play against uh, Super JJ and RDU, and I won both games. I think they are some really good opponents, and they are for sure bringing some good decks. It was really hard to play against Super JJ since I wasn't sure about his last Paladin deck. But uh, I won the matchup with my mid-range Shaman. That have been, been re doing really good so far. I'm 4-0 with it, so that feels great. And yeah, everyone knows that RDU is one of the top players in the whole world. So I'm really happy right now. In the whole tournament, yeah, RDU is one of the top players, but I believe that Sixo is the best player and I've been praying a bit with him and he's really really good. I don't want to face him until the final. <laughs> and my own lineup, I won some games at Dreamhack, uh, Winda got top 8 and my Agra Shaman did really good there, like 3 owing people. This is the first tournament I'm bringing mid-range Shaman. I got the deck list from another Danish guy named Janus, he's playing from Nordic Rangers. It's been doing really good so far and I hope it can help me win the tournament. I, I hope that they will remove some cards, some of the R&D ones, but yeah, it's still a card game so you can never remove it the whole way. But I think Hearthstone is more about streaming than tournaments right now. I started streaming as well and want to go full time just stream every day. I'm looking forward to it. Overall over Hearthstone I like the different format they're bringing like Bedstone and now this with 9 decks. It really shows that you need to be good at the game. Like back in the days you could just bring like free Agri decks like Secret Paladin, Sue and probably Patron Warrior and just sweep everything. It doesn't really matter how good you was at for example Secret Paladin. 
But for now, you really need to be good because you need to play Priest, you need to play some control decks as well because the opponent will just ban your aggro decks if you know that you can't play control. So you need to be good overall, and I really like that. I'm going to win this shit. <laughs> Been training for it. I'm going to confirm that I did not bribe Tessin to say <laughs> Shaman. Um, but <laughs> whatever anyone thinks. But yeah, you know, Tessin, again, just uh, from his interview there, like super happy about his performance, can't blame him. And also, you know, he's saying he's like actually practiced with Sixo, didn't want to run into him too early, but that is the match we have coming up. But when you're a practice partner with Sixo, you know, that speaks volumes as well, because I imagine Sixo doesn't really want to practice with people he doesn't think can perform. Yeah, Sixo um, is really critical of people's play, and it, he was in the past specifically just uh, uh, pointing out mistakes and uh, trying to help them grow. So if you are you have the courage to practice with Sixo, you are definitely going to improve if he allows you to play with him. So, uh, Iko, have you practiced with Sixo lately or like in the past? Yeah, I mean uh, here and there. Um, when 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 we both had the opportunity, we like to put practice for, uh, with each other. Not only for Arsenal, like for other games as well at times. Uh, anyway, he's, he's a great practice partner to have because he's a very a uh, very skilled player. He plays the game a lot, of course, uh, and grinds a lot. He, he knows the ins and outs of pretty much every class. And um, yeah, definitely a great practice partner to have for sure. And a great friend, because I know Sixo from the very beginning when he, j that he even hadn't played Harson at the time. We just, um, it was a very stage of ESGN. We just uh, went to the bar and uh, there was our toss and a couple of guys and like, hey, we are here to play Harson. And Sixo was like, oh, I might start playing it. And he just got Legend like super easy next, uh, next week or whatever. Seemed a pretty reasonable decision at the time, I can imagine, especially it seems to be paying out so far. But we did also get a chance to sit down with Sixo and find out if he too is going to flex at the end of his video. I'm Sixo and I'm here to represent Navi G2A one last time and put my time with Navi to a good end. People don't want to watch the same format over and over. Like People get bored of the same three or four meta decks playing against each other every tournament. So I think we need more frequent changes. And since Blizzard doesn't like changing a game frequently, I think it might put tournament organizers on the job to have different formats to change things up. We saw the Firebat tournament a week ago, which was like a huge success. So I think that having different formats to like make every tournament unique to some degree is very important. My group started with me playing against Angelo Checky and Colento playing against Grain in the first match. I won the Druid Mirror, like we both left Druid open, so I just swept him as Druid. Crane and Kalento had a really tough first match, which Crane ended up winning 3 2, but it took like double the time any other match took, so that was pretty intense. After that, I lost to Crane. I didn't expect the Thunder deck to be like it is, so I got punished there and lost because of it. Kalento lost surprisingly his, the loser match. I had to play my own match, I didn't know what happened there, so I had to play against the, my first opponent again. That time, I wasn't very happy with my play because I had a rough travel to get here. So I was kind of tired, but I had some really good trouble with Vogue and managed to 3 him a second time. It's weird to say how players line up against each other because it's nine decks. You don't even know all of your opponent's decks because no one played all the decks by now. So like you never know how your lineups is against your opponent, like who is really in favor. But I'm pretty happy with my decks and I think just player-wise there's no player I'm unfavored against. But yeah, there's a chance that someone picks the, has a pick and bend phase and a lineup that's good against mine. So there might be a matchup where I'm unfavored, but I'm very confident in my skills as a player. I lost against Crane in the groups because my lineup didn't work out against his. I was surprised by his hunter. I don't know if there's a good way for me to change up my pick and bend. So if I play against him again, I have to think about it more since now I know his decks. But yeah, I haven't really thought about how I would change it and how I would get a better matchup against Crane. So I'm kind of worried about him playing him again but other than that, I'm not really scared of anyone. And I hope I can play against Toy in the finals because I think we are two of the best players and I would like him to do well and get a second place. I think my opponents get pretty unlucky always because they're queuing to me. Like, there's 16 players, or now eight players in the top eight, and my opponent just randomly queues into the best, so he get pretty unlucky, so I wish him some better luck in, the, in our match so he can maybe win a game. <laughs> nice breakdown there from Six of his uh, road to the top eight. And also, it's uh, quite right to mention he had a bit of a rough trip here. So he must have been pretty tired yesterday. He said he got caught out by the lineups a few times. Uh, well, but he's, he's done the hard part, right? So he must be refreshed today. 
and gonna be feeling pretty good to go against Tessa. Yeah, definitely. But uh, can we explain what happened to him? Because it's actually I'm still not sure myself, said. to be honest. All right, something so along with lost documents. Yes. Yeah, so from what I know, his documents got lost or stolen in a way, and uh, he had to ask his sister. To, he was actually stopped at the border, so he couldn't cross the the Romanian border. So he asked his sister to fly to him with <laughs> uh, with his other documents to be able to come to the tournament. Yeah. So definitely. According to Sixto, his uh, wallet was stolen from his pocket while he was asleep on the plane. Yeah, that can happen. It's <laughs> unfortunate, but uh, definitely he was tired. But, but good but job, Sixo sister, for bringing his oh stuff yeah, out. Sure. Because otherwise it would have been very complicated to get him here. And he's made top eight as well, so well worth it overall. I'm interested to see if he makes many, uh, many alterations in terms of his lineup choices. Obviously, we'll find out on the back end as we do see the lineups come up now. So we're going to see the ban uh, coming out from six. So actually banning out the Shaman as his first ban and then Tessin going for the Druid. So that, there's that first ban Druid we were talking about. Yeah, so that's not surprising that Tessin bans Druid. The surprising thing for me is that he actually picks Warrior instead of Druid himself. Because most of the time we see the trend, a player bans a class and picks a class, if possible. So here, the Druid was not banned, but he picked Warrior after all. Iko, what do you think about it? Yeah, I mean, um, it all depends on what kind of Warrior he's playing, right? Uh, I, I actually tried dragon to look up warrior. the deck list. Yeah, a Dragon Warrior, okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, Dragon Warrior is a pretty, a pretty good deck, um, a pretty good proactive deck. Um, it, I would have actually left the Druid open if it was a Control Warrior, uh, because Controller is one of the few decks that actually can claim that it has a good matchup against the Maligos Druid. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we've, saw, we've seen it before in previous series where you would just get out of range by armoring up a lot and, um, yeah, just win that way. But yeah, with the Dragon Warrior, I, I don't see him. Uh, I, uh, Dragon Warrior, of course, one of the strongest decks as well in the meta, and I don't see, I don't blame him for banning Druid, which is arguably also one of the strongest decks. The, the Shaman that Sixo is playing is a, is a face Shaman, but then what happened where we had um, more bans, so Sixo banning Warrior and Warlock, uh, where Thessin bans Druid and Warlock. Yeah, these are some of the more standard bans we probably expected in terms of the top three or four classes getting banned out first. We don't see any like early priest bans or like a you know, hunter ban or anything weird like that. But we do get to see the rogue again, which has got a quite a decent amount of success so far in this yeah. tournament. We see life coaches sort of teched rogue to be more like anti aggro based to do pretty well so far. Maybe not as well for the other G two guys, but that looks like his life coach's style of deck to me. But what do you think about rogue and, and its spot in this in this matchup specifically? Do you think there's any key matchup it needs to be brought in to beat? Or do you think it's just going to be a general deck to just play, maybe even start with? Well, the Rogue um, does tend to be um, good against Warriors on, at times, right? Definitely uh, better than against uh, Shaman, for example. Um, but yeah, uh, it's... It, uh, and like the Rogue pick is also really good if um, you plan ahead and uh, the, yeah, try to figure out what your opponent's uh, final pick might be, mm -hmm. which you might also in the future encounter. Not only the second pick that you might expect your opponent to pick in that scenario, but also the final pick. Yeah, so we are getting into the first game of Tessin versus Six. So Hunter on Hunter, some pretty slightly different decks by looks things though. So take it away, guys. Thank you so much, Raven. So there are different decks because one is a midrange hunter and the other is the Barnes Yoshirash deck. But getting Yoshirash in an opening hand is not good. Yeah, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> not not just the Yoshirash, but also the high main. So basically, Barnes will be a dead card by now. <laughs> and uh, yeah. As, mu as flashy as this um, whole deck can be with the uh, Barnes, uh, if you don't get it to work, then all of a sudden you're just stuck with a kind of crappy Yog uh, <laughs> Yog and Load deck. Uh, not Yog and Load deck. Even is, like it's, like it's, the it's not even Yog and Load anymore. It's not just a crappy Yog and Load deck. Is it like the, the worst <laughs> possible opening that you're tracking into high mid and get your Shiraz? Because like the, the, the point of the deck is to get the Barnes. Yeah, I and mean, he was pretty much digging for the Barnes with the, <laughs> with the tracking, I assume. But uh, yeah, unfortunately found himself in a situation where he had to take the high main. So how do you win ECOP? Uh, if you have this bad of an opening, you still have the spells, you have the lock and load yeah. as you mentioned, so you can still try to play with the traps and, uh, and deal damage. But is it enough to, to fight versus a solid mid-range that should have an okay curve? Well, uh, the traps can definitely be a big factor um, depending on what kind of traps uh, there are. And um, yeah, then you can just eventually burn your opponent out. I mean, you also run the same 
uh, the same burn cards pretty much with quick shot and you got around the eagle horn bow and hero power of course every time so if you're able to like swing the momentum at some point uh, clearing the board and um, yeah get ahead in damage you can you, st you still have a chance but it's going to be hard because overall the stability of uh, the regular hunter that Tessin is playing is just going to be Superior. on average, on average uh, more favorite yeah yeah, I just I just like uh six of smirking. <laughs> it's like this this real life <laughs> this is a ridiculous hand. But uh yeah he will have to do the best uh he can out of this um bad situation. Lock and load can work with the coin and provide him with some with some more cards. So we'll yeah. see how it works. This but is this is an insane opening by Tessin here <laughs> with the double kill command in hand already. He can close out this game already on turn six potentially. Yeah, there's so much damage coming from, from Tess in there. Six already at 16. Infested Wolf is also a really nice card to be played on turn five here uh, because it's another body. You can play Hymen on six. You can finish the game on seven with kill commands. So whatever happens, you're in a good position. Sixo needs to get some really good traps, secrets, spells, whatever he can do. So he has his own high main. That's something played for mana, like a normal hunter. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's definitely not what you want to, uh, to have. I mean, of course, having the Hymen on the board is good, but it, Tessin will just have no problems. He doesn't even have to deal with it. He can just ignore it. The he can and there is not going to be a threat of a Houndmaster or anything like that. Still enough damage this turn to finish yeah. the game with the uh, steady shot next turn. Exactly. It's not a turn 6 kill like I was hoping for, but <laughs> turn 7 Close enough. <laughs> well, 6 can probably just concede here, unless he wants to lock and load, see what's up. So we will see the lock and load. He goes for the tracking. He is getting a hunter card, which is a bear trap, which is not going to help. Yeah, there are unfortunately no healing cards available in the <laughs> hunter class. <laughs> not yet, at least. Yeah, no ice block either. That was a tough loss. Y you are fighting versus Tessin. Tessin, who went from the from the winner's bracket, from the upper bracket, and uh, you have similar lineups in a way. You get Hunter versus Hunter mirror match, and you get that hand. Yeah, uh, Sixos, Sixos deck is kind of high risk, high reward, right? I mean, it, it's super volatile. When it hits, it hits hard. When you get that Barnes, it's obviously like a game winning move immediately on turn four. But when you don't get it, and when you, especially when you get those two minions into your opening hand, it's just it not only doesn't make your hand quality worse, but also like your overall dex energy completely throws throws it out the window. That's true. So, like for the view, for the viewers who are not familiar with Sixos deck, Barnes, there are only two minions outside of Barnes in the deck. There's Yasharaj and High Main. So you play Barnes, you gar guarantee one of those two minions. The dream is to get a copy of Yasharaj. That brings Yasharaj, which is a 10-10, that will bring High Main next turn. Yeah, or just bring high mains, fine too. Yeah, definitely. On turn four or turn three with the coin. So Hunter stays the last hero standing, which means Sixo unfortunately will not be able to play that Hunter anymore in this match. Tessin goes um, with the Hunter again, and Sixo takes his Shaman. This was his first bi pick. This is his best deck for this. Yeah, Shaman definitely a very strong contender, and this um, favorite usually against Hunter. Hunters. Um, also, uh, are a very good proactive deck. However, Shaman, especially like the face Shaman, just um, does the job way better and way faster. Yeah, and also there is normally uh, it's really hard to answer the face the flame reef faceless. Fortunately for Tessin, he does have the deadly shot. Uh, but uh, if there are some minions on board and the deadly shot does not hit the faceless, there is like nothing else. You have to just kill it with kill command and damage, which is not something you want to do. Yeah, and there might also be just a minion left over uh, to protect the flame with faceless. Um, but yeah, which we see it's, he's not even planning to play the flame with faceless on turn seven, on turn four anyway. Uh, instead, uh, goes for the feral spirits, overloading himself right now. So Tessin just deals with the spirits uh, quite nicely, dealing one damage to face with a huge doubt, going for fire bat, and uh, preparing for the next turn. He doesn't have big minions. The Nether fire bat is not that exciting in his hand. He has that the D shot as a removal card. But uh, it's not like Sixo is going to play something big this turn. Yeah, Be yeah. Because Sixo um, did go for first spirits, all he was able to do is tow them up. But then he at least sets up for a nice doom hammer if, if he wants to keep the board clean. The early game hunter board is uh, very vulnerable to do to doom hammers. Yeah, sure. Later on, when <laughs> high mains hit the board or 
uh, Call of the Wild, Doomhammer becomes much, we much worse, but um, mm -hmm. until that point, it allows you to establish some sort of board presence behind the protection of a Doomhammer. Definitely. And now Tessin has this tracking, so whatever he decides, he's going to destroy one high main. Uh, he was maybe thinking about the, the wolf for a, for a moment there, because the wolf would help him to have a better turn right now, But and he can't even play the high main on the next turn. But then just throwing two high mains from the deck is, is might be too deadly, and you want to have a minion that is going to trade efficiently. It was a tough call, though, because sometimes versus Shaman, you play a high main, and they're like, sure, it doesn't have taunt, they just go for phase. But uh, in this case... Um, Tessin is doing a good job at uh, keeping Sixo at bay. Sixo expecting this uh, Flaming Faceless to be protected from the deadly shot uh, thanks to the Tunnel Troc. However, we do see that uh, yeah, Tessin does also have the quick shot to kill off the Tunnel Troc and then have a secure kill on the Flaming Faceless with the deadly shot. But there is a second Faceless as well that uh, Sixo was playing for that. If there is removal, he has the follow up. If there is no removal, it's even better. Uh, I mean, just gets uh, gets down on the board, but uh, who can finish the game faster now? Um, yeah, it's, uh, obviously we see the hunter having a big life lead, a uh, big health lead, 30 health still available, uh, six or down to 19. So, yeah, obviously Tessin has the advantage in, in terms of that. However, we do see a doom hammer in Sixo's hand. He can push a lot of damage with that. And, so uh, d t uh, yeah, and Shaman also has a higher burst potential um, in general. So. We could see um, Shaman actually edging this out by a very close margin. Yeah, so you can deal. You could deal 11 to face, but he goes for 9 to face right now and double tries to. Double kill command now. <laughs> this oh. is one damage of lethal here. But I, there's no yes. doubt in my mind that Tessin will go for this right here, right now. So if you go for it, you set up lethal for the next turn. You just win with a steady shot. There's no heal for the Shaman. Uh, can Shaman kill you? If you go yeah. all in, Th there's obviously the threat of um, <laughs> Rockbiter weapon. I mean, we see 11 damage on the board already. Rockbiter would be 17, and then all it takes is that lava burst at 6 with an end already. And wow. 10 damage that. into that 6 6 just to keep the high main on board. So now uh, taunts will be super good, but there is the Call of the Wild as well for Tessin as the next card. The yeah. thing from below will be super good. Tessin, Tessin has the confidence of uh, still being able to win this game. Uh, <laughs> despite, despite, um, yeah, wasting all this burn potential. Actually, now with the Taunt Totem, Sixo can decide to play another Tusker to Tamik instead of going for Thing from below. If you go for Thing, is still good, but uh, you can have a better Thing next turn, I believe. And that even if there is Call of the Wild, Huffer still dies to the the Taunt Totem, or the Hymen is being stopped, so you're in a good position. Look at this. This is so much damage coming from, from Sixo. This is uh, 4, 7, 12, 17. This is... This is uh, this will be lethal if not for the for the charge and the flame tongue. Now we can Lava Burst... You can Lava Burst Misha. Uh, you can go for phase for what? For 10 damage? Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately not enough. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, this, uh, Sixo will have to protect himself from as much damage, incoming damage as possible. He's only at 11 health. Gonna try to find something useful of this Finley. Maybe like a Fire Blast or, yeah, Lesser Heal might also get the job done. Yeah, Lesser Heal actually can work here. Uh, the thing is, you will not be able to play Argent Squire, but that's probably fine. You heal yourself for two, you play Thing, you Lava Burst, you go that, you probably face it. Um, are you considering killing Huffer here? Because this is super close, like if, if Hunter has something to add to deal damage. All right, so let's say, let's see. If you uh, play Thing, Huffer kills the Thing, and then there is 9, 11 damage coming to your face. If there is only two damage from the Hunter, you're dead after the Lesser Heal. So you probably have to kill Huffer because you want uh, High Main to trade with the 5-5. Five five. You want to buy yourself a bit more time. Yeah, you definitely have to kill the Huffer off. <laughs> it's just too much oncoming damage otherwise. And yeah, even if... Uh, even if Tessin was to clear the entire board here, even if you want to go for a board clear. Double Huffer wins the game. Okay, Misha, that, that's the Misha that does not win the game yet. Huffer will be good. That's the Leok that does not change much, which means you can still, uh, you have to still high main into the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, it is painful, but at the same time, he's uh, protected from like potential rock biter burst now, thanks to that Misha. And yeah, no, no AoE drawn for Sixo either. So uh, that hunter, dude, yeah. is just doing his work. 
Hunter is just that I'm like when I've been playing ladder um this month, I'm I, I'm facing a lot of hunters. I'm facing a lot of hunters. I haven't played Hunter myself that much, but uh, kindly grandmother and uh, the fact that you can play so many versions as well. Hunter is in a very weird spot right now because everything the Hunter does, other classes kind of can do better, no matter what kind of approach you take. And uh, <laughs> yeah, people, uh, I guess it, it's rising in popularity because people want Hunter to be good again, right? They don't want to play Shaman all the time. And so just, uh, they want to they try to make some good Hunters work. And yeah, of course, there's a lot of variety in Hunter as well, as we can see. Some people brought the Yasharash Hunter, some people bring like the uh, very different approaches to mid-range Hunter. I mean, there's no, there's no, um, there's no like perfect list just yet. Some people bring like um, the normal approach with uh, tigers and whatnot. Some people yeah. bring uh, desert camel hunters. It's also good versus warriors, I believe. Hunters still. We um, saw scavenging hyena as well. But it was bad versus shaman. Still, Tessin was able to get that game, which is really important. Now, uh, Sixo, if he wants to win the whole series, he has to win with Rogue. All the matches, all the games. Rogue, I believe, has a good matchup versus Hunter, but will it have a good matchup versus Warrior and Paladin? Well, we'll see if Sixo wins this. Actually, like first, he has to focus on this this game specifically. It might be a good matchup, but uh, you can still lose it if Hunter is aggressive enough. Also, kindly grandmother yeah. uh, into the two ones. The Rogue definitely has a potential uh, to reverse sweep here. We saw uh, Sixo in Sixo's interview. He already also mentioned that in one of his group matches, he uh, defeated Angelo Shaggy, I think, 3-0 with the Rogue as well. So um, yeah, and this is uh, Tessin's lineup right here. That we see definitely can get 3-0'd by Rogue. There is no face shaman, which is like the biggest weakness of the rogue of course no mage either and uh, yeah warrior uh, can be problematic but at the same time it's yeah it's it's um it all comes down to who has the best tempo yeah i do agree and this turn would you like eagle hornbow to kill the two one because if you go for either huge toad or kindly grandmother and fiery bats uh, your minions can be cleared so it's uh, it's a bit awkward if you go for if you go for eagle hornbow. Not only you ha you kill the two one right now, you have the weapon for the next turn. The next turn you can go for huge toad with the grandmother at the same time. Yeah, with the dagger up already, it's it's kind of painful to put in. Um, yeah, the one at least like either you go for two one health minions, or you go for none at all. There's like no middle ground here because um, when you see a hero power being available. Um, you want to make uh, six or choose basically which one he actually wants to attack and not uh, not give him zero options in that regard. That's right. So that with fun of knives is a bit awkward because if you fun of knives right now, you can lose the two one. So maybe just attack with the weapon at the one one, then kill the free two with the two one. And yeah, uh, but if he, if he goes for the fan, the problem is the death rattle of the fiery bat. It yeah, can, it can potentially clear the two one and. Uh, therefore, Sixo does play the pen after attacking into the 1-1 one, one in order to play around that. Barnes! Oh, baby. Barnes What's fits the curve. Is the best play here yeah. on empty board. And you can get a high main. You can get... Um, can you, fi you can't get a fire bat, right? Because we've seen two of them. Well, I, unfortunately... Oh, oh, it's the zone. It's yeah. one of the most disappointing ones because you see the legendary, um, like thing, uh, the border, and you're like, oh, legendary card. Oh wait, no, it's just Nizoth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Nizoth does not have any beneficial effects uh, besides spell cry, of course. <laughs> but yeah, that doesn't matter for Barnes. And the questing adventure is going to get killed anyway because there's a weapon, and Nizoth, even though it doesn't do much, it is one damage. The questing adventure. And this leaves Sixo in a terrible position with double cobra, double sap, a super reactive hand. Yeah, definitely a very dead hand for Sixo right here. He does pick up a second questing adventure, but with the damage on board already to kill it off, we might see him hold on to it for a little bit longer until he maybe even finds a conceal. Yeah, because even if you go like questing adventure sap, it still dies to the weapon attack. Oh wow, and this is so painful, <laughs> because this pretty much signifies that Sixo is going to attack this huge toad again next turn, at least that's what he's planning. So a huge toad, two mana, nine damage, that's and, and the death rattle, good. so like two mana pyroblast, technically. Oh, look at this reparation. So now you can go for the questing adventure. Can you go all in on it as well? Prep, sap? Yeah, the prep, sap on the high win is Double a huge cobalt. deal. 
and I'm pretty sure Sixo has to go all, on, all in. Disregard the deadly shot. To be like, yeah, you have the deadly shot, you win. You have, to, you don't have it. I'm in a very good position to win all of a sudden with on the back of this questing adventure alone. Well, he is um, a big one. 14 Dembo. Oh, oh, there's man. the deadly shot. Deadly shot off the top. This means that Tassin almost has it. Do, do you do you concede this game? Probably not yet, but. Not only that, he should also animal companion. This <laughs> is like, yep, well, that happened. What can I do? Yeah. Quick wow. after trick, draw the card and bug out the observer mode. Uh, Sixo didn't get anything that he could play after this. Talk about getting top decked and wrecked. <laughs> well, at least it's not Yoxera on this time. But, uh, oh man, that that was a, a tough run for Sixo. Do you see a, do you see a good way for Sixo to come back here? I mean, he is having a min minions now, and the sap. Yeah, and now he's starting to draw his minions, and uh, the, the sap always on you know, him is good at any stage of the game. And uh, yeah, now he all of a sudden he did swing the tempo in his favor again, thanks to those uh, timely minion draws. And now all of a sudden Sixo might actually be in a position to win this again. However, uh, yeah, with oncoming damage from he constant hero powers, quick shot, and and the eagle horn bow. And, Hunter, uh, and Rogue already being at 15 health, it might be too little too late uh, for Sixo to swing this game back around. So 13 points of health after the hero power. Your hero power phase at 13. With the weapon, it's 10. With the quick shot, it's 7. Which means you probably have to kill the high main. And if you're killing the high main, you're not killing Tessin. Exactly. So Sixo might decide to go for phase. Yeah. But even still, this, there is like Sixo has 10 damage only. He will need to find 9 damage somewhere. And Destin will have the hero power again next turn. Oh man, this is tough. So, if, like, you have to deal with the high main, I believe. You cannot leave it. It's 9, 11, plus 3. Yeah, a gadget might be a good draw, because then you can suicide the uh, Tomb Villager into the high main, get a coin, and maybe, like, pull off the Miracle Train, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a sap. He didn't get a sap, he got a net win, and this is enough damage with a quick shot. Like Sixo obviously doesn't know there is a quick shot, so he can't play around it. He had to go for phase to have a chance. He hopes there is no damage at all, that only in his office in the hand. But unfortunately for him, there is a quick shot, which means Destin is going to take this game, this match, and uh, move forward undefeated is in, in this tournament so far. A 3 0 with Hunter. I did not expect this going into this series for sure. I uh, mean, me, uh, me neither, man. I guess basically the start was pretty brutal. But then Shaman had a good matchup versus Hunter. Rogue had a good matchup versus Hunter. So it seemed like overall, Sixo made good picks with the decks, but uh, nothing is 100% in Hearthstone, and Raven can confirm that for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's just kind of crazy, isn't it? I mean, 3 0 in, we've seen a lot of Druid 3 0, mainly from Hoi uh, in this tournament, but you wouldn't genuinely expect it from Hunter, right? You know, you wouldn't really think Hunter's the deck that's going to take that victory. But obviously, saw a bit rough from Sixo where he started the Yashiraj Hunter with. Um, with Yashiraj <laughs> in hand, pretty much, which which is never a good start with that deck. And then high main from... Yeah, it, it got progressively worse. But Tessin played super solid. Like, he's just yeah. very consistent, solid play. And as you said, Ecop, there's no reason why he couldn't have beat 6-0. And he did more than beat him. He just 3-0'd him instead. So. Yeah, in dominant fashion. Unexpected, but yeah. Um, I mean, definitely not undeserving. That's yeah, for sure. of course. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to actually now just check out the best plays of the match, presented by HP, of course, which is sponsoring this tournament, and the guys are playing on their awesome Omen laptops. Yeah, those laptops are pretty cool overall. And uh, I like how HP is the sponsor, because we, like, health, po health points, we have HP. How many ah, HP does he have left? It's working it in there. It's a fit, man. It's a fit. Yeah, so we saw the uh, the game in pretty quickly there, as, like we said, it's just, it's like, so it just didn't have too many options with that Yashiraj Hunter and. Now we see Tessin actually be able to clear up all the threats from this aggro shaman. And that was a big decision, actually, just going 10 damage into the 7-6 yeah. instead of just going for phase there. Yeah, the follow-up from chances. Call of the Wild, though, versus aggro shaman, you feel yeah. pretty comfortable uh, to actually close out the game. And then this this was the moment I think everyone in this GTO actually just went, oh, my God, like, uh, he caught more than most, actually. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, you know, and I completely agree. Um, I was sat with uh, Orange and Hoy watching this game, and we were like, you go all in. There's literally no other thing for it. You have so to. you build the questing up. It's the only way to end the game for 6 -0. And then, hey-ho, deadly shot off the top. to, com <laughs> to look at this and laugh at this. <laughs> 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 it was, like, brilliant. Like, like the shake of the head, but inside, really, it's like... 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm, good, I'm sorry, 6 0, but I'm not sorry. That's pretty much. But there you are. Um, congratulations, Tessin, on a very convincing 3 0 victory in the, your first match of top eight. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Like, oh, shit. That was rough. Like, <laughs> playing against 6 was so hard. Like, I see him as the best player in the world. I prepared a lot. And he, actually, like, he helped me prepare for the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. And you asked me yesterday about the rogue list. And he was actually the guy who told me to pick rogue. And. It worked out yesterday, and now I'm facing him, and in the last practice against him, he free owed me with Rogue, so even <laughs> then I was ahead, I was like, okay, please, not again. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it helped a lot. Like last night, I practiced a lot with Curse. Like we spoke for two hours, like, okay, which order am I going to pick? Which order am I going to ban and everything? So yeah, big shout out for him. Like Actually, uh, Sixo, like we talked ab about it in before the match a bit. So um, you told me that Sixo surprised you because he picked Rogue instead of Paladin. So you were expecting him to pick Paladin on the second pick, was it? Yeah. Okay. So why why did why do you think he picked Rogue? Yeah, like like I, I know that Sixo he likes to play Rogue in the matchup, like uh, like in the Shaman matchup. Everything th thinks you can never win it or anything, but yeah, he believes Rogue is a really good class, and if you can play it right with Christian Adventure. Like, you can see how close it was to beat my Honda egg, even hey, though... Even in a rough match for the Rogue, it actually got extremely close towards the end. For sure, and I, I had some really, really good draws. Like, that was the reason I won the last... Like, even if you don't look at my deadly shot, I followed the curd really good, like, turn 4, top deck Barnes, and turn 5, playing bow against his Christian Adventure. And, yeah, it was really lucky the last game. Yeah, well, the good thing is, you know, you said you practiced and prepared with six, so you didn't uh, knock him out of the tournament. He is just in the lower bracket now, so he will continue playing later on. But for now, we're going to be right back with the next game. So stick around, guys.